Cole and his gang sat a few tables away. Cole was staring at me. Staring. Such a mild word for the slitted gaze leveled, at, leveled on me, piercing me. His eyes could throw daggers. I'd have a few embedded in my chest. Not that that's where he was looking, mind you. I gathered my courage and maintained contact, waiting, expectant. Except there was no vision this time, no mental unfolding of us kissing. This morning must have been a one-time thing, a fluke. I was relieved about that. I wasn't disappointed. Besides, things were better this way. Proof the angelic Mackenzie was perched next to him, her arm draped around his shoulders, staking her claim, warning me away. She, too, glared at me as she whispered something in his ear. I didn't have to be a mind reader to know she'd just plotted my social death. Whatever. Popularity wasn't a concern for me. What? I mouthed at her. And it was a legitimate question. What had I done to her? Nothing. That's what. She ran her tongue over her teeth just before growling something that sounded like, Let me teach her. To Cole. Just a little lesson, please. I didn't hear his reply. Cat patted my hand. Are you listening to me? Because these nuggets I'm throwing out are golden. Namely, if you want to be in power, you have to knock the current queen off her pedestal. Kicking works, as does punching. I wasn't listening, I'm sorry. I responded, my cheeks heating as I faced her. So who's the current queen? The ex of the guy you were just stripping in your mind, Reeves said. To think, I had a front row seat to the day the war ignited. Between Mackenzie Love and Allie, something. Bill, I said. As Kat said, Allie will totally win, but she'll want me to have the throne. I'm positive. I shudder at the thought of anyone thinking I was a person to emulate. I don't want the throne.